Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Tuesday, February 27th, 2018, episode 34. You give us 20 minutes and we'll give you headlines that are dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yeah, maybe a little lulls. And actually, this episode, I've got plenty of lulls for you for this episode. So if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show. And you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. The image of the profile match the matches the image on this show. Don't don't try to like or follow or friend or whatever my sock accounts, my backup sock accounts, because I hardly ever use them, so I might not see your request for years. If you're watching live on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned in because I will respond to the comments after the YouTube part of the show is over. If you're watching on YouTube, join me on Facebook so next time you don't miss the full show. Now, today's show title is Have a Heart, dot, 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 printed. You can get show notes at hisheadlines.com or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video or go to istate.tv slash ho34. You can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. On today's headline uh, episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, 3D Printed Hearts. France slaps the Turks, ding dong, the net is dead, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I, you know what? I need to insert like a little drum roll here, something dramatic. But just, just put the drum roll in your head and imagine that it's actually happening. Ladies and gentlemen, now, here are your 20 headlines. You may have missed your 20 minutes of headlines. You may have missed functioning heart tissue 3D printed. Researchers at the Wake Forest School of Medicine have successfully bioprinted functioning heart tissue. Professor Anthony Atala and his team used a specially developed bio ink created from material found in the human body naturally. Uh, what they then did was they, they took some rat heart muscles and I guess they suspended them in the bio ink. Don't ask me how. I don't understand. But, but apparently they suspended them in the bio ink. And from that, they were able to print functioning heart tissue. And the story is from reliawire.com. Scientists bioprint functional 3D heart tissue. One exciting development has come out of the Wake Forest School of Medicine in North Carolina. Researchers in the medical school have developed a way of printing heart tissue using a technique that is gaining significant interest in the field, namely bioprinting. For you guys who are regular uh, uh, followers of iState, be it on the website, the shows, whatever, you know what bioprinting is because we, we cover it a lot. In this study, award-winning, and for those of you who don't, tough! <laughs> okay, there's there are links that will give you explanations. In this study, award-winning researcher Professor Anthony Atala and his group developed a bio-ink based on materials found in the human body. So after bioprinting the cardiomyocytes, dang, I think I nailed that. Cardiomyocytes, dudes, I saw the word, I said the word, and I think I'm right. I'm proud of myself. The cardiomyocytes aligned into an organized structure that showed significant similarity to human heart tissue. However, when those researchers probed further, they found that the bioprinted structure did more than just look like heart tissue. It also behaved like heart tissue. Dun, dun, dun. Just imagine it's coming. It's coming. If you live long enough, you could go down to your bioprinting store and, or, and uh, you know, hey, I mean, my liver, man, my liver shot. Oh, dude, you need a liver. Hold on. I'll order one up. 
See, that's the way it's going to be. That's, that's, the, that's the future, folks. France sends Turk Reich strong message on Afrin. Uh, is Europe running out of patience with the bellicose Turk Reich? When even the French join in to tell you to knock it off? Yeah, you know you've done ticked off Europe. Am I, am I making undue fun of the French? Probably. Perhaps the Turk Reich has worn out its welcome in the European community, and perhaps its naked, brutal aggression against Afrin will be the final in a long line of potential tipping points that cause Europe to stop thinking of Turkey as an ally and start thinking of Turkey as what it actually is, an enemy. An enemy of anyone and everyone around its borders, which stands in direct conflict with the interests of Europe. But I'm no defender of State of State Face Land. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Europe. The Turk Reich, it's a competing coercive enterprise that definitely is is looking at you as is not really a great ally. And and you you should you should be doing the same within that State of State Face perspective plus the turks are totally trying to hose afrin which is a part of rahava which is a stateless experiment that i'm following closely on iState. so yeah turkey you're a bunch of freaking jerks but that's not the only reason that they're jerks and if you read iState, you know you know why they're jerks because i cover the turk Reich all the time lately the French Prime Minister Emmanuel Macron implored Russia to rein in their rabid dog, and he also informed the Turks that the resolution by the UN to create a 30-day ceasefire in Syria also applies to Afrin. And I guess we'll see if uh, Erdogan, who who right now is actually busy making 66-year-old girls cry, probably 60-year-old girls too, but or women, whatever. Six-year-old girls cry while he celebrates their potential future martyrdom. We'll see. We'll see if that Erdogan will heed Macron's warning. And if you missed that story, I have a link to it uh, in 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 this uh, article, so you can you can read for yourself how Erdogan uh, uh, paraded a six-year-old girl dressed in a military outfit and uh, boldly proclaimed that maybe someday she too will be a martyr for 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 the Great Turk Reich. And uh, the little girl, of course, was in tears, crying her eyes out. And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, everybody loves you. You know, when you're a martyr, we're gonna drape you in the flag." Good times, good times. That's that's who Erdogan is. He's a he's a. I believe it's uh, something like the P, the O, the oh a POS, a POS. I let you figure out what that means. Net neutrality is now officially dead. That's right, folks. I can now say it. I I covered this last week. I told you that it looked like everybody was reporting. It looked like, yeah, they're going to release the rules and they're going to make it official. All the net neutrality regulations are now dead. Dead, dead, dead. Deader, you know what they are? They're deader than my loser status as a Philadelphia Eagles fan because the Eagles won the Super Bowl. So that loser status, it's dead. So... Now, here we are. Uh, the notice has taken a place, taken place, and now, well, hold on to your proverbials, folks, because after some time has passed, and and yeah, if you're out there like, well, neutrality's over, you know, I guess everything's okay, I guess the apocalypse didn't happen, you know, give it time. I'm not saying the apocalypse is going to happen. I actually don't think it will, but maybe it will. I don't know. Uh... I guess we're going to find out in the next months and couple of years, whatever it might take, uh, uh, who was right and who was wrong in the long heated debates that led up to this, I guess for some would be a glorious moment and some would be an absolute moment of terror and whoa, we'll see who's right. Probably somewhere in the middle. Is the clock ticking on ads for ICOs even outside of Facebook? So... After Facebook banned the advertising for ICOs, and ICOs are, uh, ooh, what is what does it stand? Coin uh, offering. Oh, man. What does the ICO? You know what? I'm going to Google this right now. You guys are going to watch me do it. I'm going to go and Google it. 
What does ICO stand for? I need to know. This is important information. ICO. What does freaking ICO mean? ICO. Definition. Yeah, I, I typed ICO and I didn't get it. It's, it's basically, it's a coin offering. It's a initial coin. There you go. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word initial. Initial coin offering, an unregulated means by which funds are raised for a new cryptocurrency venture. So the problem is that there's a lot of scammers going on there. And Facebook decided to cancel the ads. And now there's a move among other ad platforms, to consider the same thing. And, and the warning is basically uh, do some self-regulating, clean yourselves up, come find, find a method of, I don't know, certification, whatever it takes to kind of identify the legitimate ICOs from the scam ICOs, or otherwise your, your ads are going to be banned. So that's kind of looming over you and... I really hope the ICO universe can come up with some self-regulating, self-governing methodologies. Because as as you can probably guess, I'm I'm not hoping that the government tries to come in and do the work that the free market can do. Iraq continues flight ban over Iraqi Kurdistan. Iraq has decided to extend the flight ban over Iraqi Kurdistan another three months with no real promise that the flight ban will be lifted even after that date. Now, while the Iraqis seem to be offering hope that the ban might even be lifted before the three-month extension is over, there, there really are no assurances, no guarantees being offered. And it, and it seems to be largely based on one man, and that man is Hader al Abadi, the Iraqi Prime Minister from, and this is from Rudal.net. The flight ban imposed on the Kurdistan region, region by the Iraqi Prime Minister Hader al Abani had been extended, has been extended by three months. Talar Faik, the head of the Erbil International Airport, told Radao on Monday that the decision to block international flights to and from the Kurdish airports has been extended until May 31st. It was set to expire this past Wednesday. The ban affects, uh, well, actually, tomorrow. Ten minutes. Not this past Wednesday. Tomorrow. It was, it was set to expire tomorrow. The ban affects international flights to and from the Kurdistan region's international airport in Erbil and Soleimani. Once our, our Omed, Mohammed Salih, the spokesman for the KRG's transportation minister set, ministry said, given the steps the Kurdistan region and Iraq took to get closer to each other, we do not expect the closure of airports to be extended by three more months. However, he was optimistic that uh, that uh, the the ban would end before the three months. Well, I guess we'll see. Without government, who would pass bills celebrating tabletop games? Ladies and gentlemen, this is your moment of lulls, but it's not going to be your only moment of lulls. So... Why did I highlight this story? This is out of New Hampshire. So I highlighted this story because I wanted to show you how intense our legislators are working to get the serious job of governance done. You know, just the essentials. Just the essentials, folks. So in our, in our news roundup today, this will mark the second silly bill entry actually uh in the order that i had created this this was going to be the second but actually this is the first there there's a second one coming up there is a second silly bill entry for the state of new hampshire coming up which will also be another moment of lulls so in 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 this state of new hampshire also simply known as the shire also known as the home to the free state project free state just let that float in your head see if you can't hear some weird contradiction going on there but anyway in this silly bill entry we focus on table games our tabletop games a new hampshire legislator is working tirelessly to get a bill passed that would create tabletop gaming day throughout the shire on April 7th. Man, she better hurry up. She better work and hurry up. Because otherwise, you're not going to have Tabletop Gaming Day in New Hampshire. And then what will happen? All the roads will magically explode. 
as the title of this news item suggests, and it bears repeating, without government, who would pass bills celebrating tabletop games? This, this right here, this, my friends, this is why we pay taxes. This is why we bomb children in Iraq, not for the roads, but for tabletop game days to be declared. Thank you. Thank you, New Hampshire, for living up to my expectations of the value of government. Ireland gets first living tissue 3D bioprinting lab. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, at long last, Ireland will have its own mad scientist lab where it can grow through 3D bioprinting living tissues. By the way, if you haven't gotten it, that's what bioprinting is. They, well, it's not necessarily living tissue, but it is organic tissue. It is, it is printing organic tissue. That is bioprinting. So there you go. Now, now I grant it that my characterization of this lab may be a bit tad bit hyperbolic. Can I say a tad hyperbolic or should I say, you know, in the theme of the word, should I say, I grant that this characterization of this lab may be entirely hyperbolic, completely hyperbolic. There you go. See, that's how you live up to the word. But still, if Dr. Frankenstein could have had this lab, I bet his monster would have looked a lot nicer and maybe, just maybe, would not have turned on his creator. Be, be that as it may, let's Let's get at, you know, let's get to the actual news of this. The Amber Center in Ireland, thanks in no small part to Johnson & Johnson, will be getting a state-of-the-art bioprinting lab where they can conduct experiments on growing living tissue for science and for medicine. And this is from Silicon Republic. Trinity Colleges, Tr Trinity College Dublin's Amber Center has announced a partnership with global healthcare company Johnson & Johnson to open a collaborative laboratory focused on 3D bioprinting by the end of 2018. The company will also engage in research project, projects focused initially Five in minutes. orthopedics and in the long term offer its internal scientific experts and adju as adjunct professors and engage in staff exchanges. Disease-free mosquitoes coming soon to a neighborhood near you. Ladies and gentlemen, here is yet another moment of lulls. This is, I don't know if this is cool or creepy or, I don't, I, 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 I haven't been able to sort through this in my head fully. Sometimes I laugh, sometimes I cry. I don't know. Uh, if you won't eat GMOs, would you consider allowing GMMs to fly in your neighborhood and suck your blood? So you might be asking, and I hope you're asking. I'm hoping you're asking because that means you're paying attention. If you're not asking, you're not paying attention. Because believe me, if you're, if you're paying attention, you're asking. What in the heck is a GMM? Well, folks, I just made that up. And uh, it's basically, it's a genetically modified mosquito. Now that part is true. Calling it a GMM. That's all me, man. That's all me. I should copyright, trademark that. Hashtag trademark. The purpose of these mosquitoes is to drive out the diseased mosquitoes and replace a local population with a disease-free population. The GMMs. Uh, hashtag trademark. The mosquitoes are to be cultivated in many labs that can be transported to neighborhoods where, where they are then released and the work is already being done in parts of Brazil, but now the folks doing it at a larger scale want to try more targeted areas. This is from statnews.com. The company is called Oxitec. It's a British biotech firm which has been working uh, in, in Brazil, but the company sees its future here not just in big factories, but in a new business model centered on miniature labs where mosquito eggs can be raised and released into neighborhoods. These mosquitoes carry a gene that causes their offspring to die before reaching maturity with the goal of reducing vector-borne diseases. Isn't that cool? That's great. 
I mean, I don't see any harm in releasing genetically modified mosquitoes. It's got to be good for you, you know. That's what I mean. I, I don't know how to read that. I'm kind of scared, and then I'm kind of like, hey, that's kind of cool. AI lawyers are smarter, faster, maybe cheaper than meat puppet versions. Folks, this is your moment of lulls. That's right, yet another moment of lulls today, because we all need a lot more moments of lulls these, these, these last few days. How many lawyers does it take to screw in a light bulb? Two None. Minutes. They've all been replaced by an AI robot. Ha, 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 ha. And you know what? That joke's only funny. Well, it's not really funny, but it's ostensibly funny if, if you know the story behind it. You see, that that was the joke that I worked really hard on preparing just for this story. A story that brings me great joy for a multitude of reasons. Not the least of which is that a lawyer may soon be put out of business, or lawyers, by fast-working, much smarter, and much less expensive AI robots. A test done recently by LawGeeks has proven that, as far as law goes, humans suck and AI rules. And as I've said before, and I want to make this clear, I want to make this perfectly clear to anyone or any bot that might be paying attention, I welcome my robot overlords. Go Team Robot. And that is hashtag, by the way, hashtag Team Robot. I don't know if anybody's ever done that before, so maybe it should also be hashtag trademark. And the story is from Mashable. We're running a little bit low on time here, so I'll let you go and read more of the details of the story. But now, just real, I'll just add this. A new study conducted by Legal AI platform law geeks in consultation with law professors from stanford university duke university school of law and university of southern california paid 20 experienced lawyers against an ai tr trained to evaluate legal contracts and short version ai kick their proverbials last story new hampshire house passes seconds. bill letting strippers drink on the job that's right ladies and gentlemen it's about time the state of new hampshire they saw fit to passing a law that lets strippers drink on the job thank god for that and wait now hold on there bucko don't get all cocksure there's no law yet a bill has passed in new hampshire Ten house seconds. that would allow strippers and other workers to drink on the job we thank our benevolent New Hampshire leaders for even considering allowing us to drink while we work. And there you you hear the sounds, folks. And you know that, that, that beep, beep, beep. You know what that means. I know what that means. I saw it coming. That's why I, 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 I changed uh, how I was doing the stories at the end, as I always do, because I always have to speed things up at the end, because that's the way it is. But... That is all we have today for headlines you may have missed. And if you'd like to read more about the stories we cover today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for February 27th, 2018. Or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. Or go to istate.tv slash ho34 and if that's not enough options for you you can also find our audio podcast show on itunes and stitcher by searching for istate and don't forget to join me tonight on is daily tuesday with bodhi agora at 9 p.m eastern standard time on the liberty principle facebook page which is linked in the description for both the facebook and the youtube video Tonight's show is called Mac Beggs Did Nothing Wrong. And this is the the transgender wrestler transitioned from female to male and won two girls state wrestling titles. Uh, well, one one year and then won the next year. So the title is Mac Beggs Did Nothing Did Nothing Wrong. You're going to want to call in. Yeah, we have a call in number. Nah, you know what? I gotta I gotta I can't I don't have the call in number memorized, but if you tune in, it'll be scrolling. You're probably gonna want to call in because I know you're gonna have some opinions on that. So as always, remember those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at twelve thirty PM Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.